This week on the latest episode of The Big Show, it is the final week of 2021, and we'll discuss the best movies of the year. Freak, we hope now, frequent <laughs> guest and colleague Wilson Morales will join us, I think. Uh, so I think. Uh, and he'll join us to talk about his favorite films and performances of the year. Charles Kirkland Jr., of course, is always riding shotgun with me. Find out which films are the ones that are our favorites and which ones didn't make the cut. We'll have all that and more in episode 484, Keeping It Real with Film Gordon. Let's go. All right, and welcome to, wow, episode 484. Keeping it real with Film Gordon, I'm smiling because it is the last week of 2021, week 52. Wow, we made it, man. We, I think, I don't know, were we, were we here every week this year? I mean, we, we missed a couple of, of weeks, but I'm saying we were, you know, we were here. I mean, we oh, were here. We, 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 yeah, pretty much. We did a show every, almost seemed like every week, <laughs> sometimes twice a week. <laughs> like this week <laughs> so merry christmas to everybody out there happy holidays i should say because christmas is in our rear view uh we should also say uh you know we're prepared for new year's eve which is coming up a little later on this week and new year's day where we will prayerfully get into the new year uh i just want to say as a and as an advisory, be safe out there, man, because like I, Charles and I were talking before we got on the air and all I keep getting are horrible COVID stories left and right. So I'm just I'm just trying to stay in my house and let COVID wash over the neighborhood, man, and go someplace else, because I'm like I'm staying in here hunkered down. So and I mean, Charles, hey, they, they postpone the CCAs and everything. I mean, things getting crazy out there. Uh, my my son's got a post on on their phone saying that they got exposed to COVID. Somebody tested positive. They've been around them for more than a fifth. It's a feature on the iPhone that they get. So you know it's kind of great. I mean it's everywhere. It's everywhere, bro. It's everywhere, man. So I haven't said that, man. I know people are having to deal with that. So let us give you sixty minutes of some entertainment, and uh, we got a lot to talk about today. And as I said, uh, Wilson Morales. I hope will join us. If he does not, you know, Charles Kirkland and I are uh, more than capable of holding it down. And that's what we're going to do. So, Charles, today, let's kind of lay out the ground rules. Uh, every year, at the end of the year, we look back on the best films of 2021 or the best films of a particular year. And I went through all the films that we've seen this year, and I have definitely some favorites and some some other films that we're going to talk about in another show uh, when we start talking about the ones that are the opposite of these the ones that aren't so great um but it, it was interesting because there were several films i saw that i wanted to put on one list or the other but they weren't released because they played at film festivals you know i'm, I'm talking specifically about stuff that played maybe at a at toronto that uh, just didn't get distribution this year because there was one film I really wanted to talk about, but I'm not gonna get in front of ourselves because if I talk about it now and then it comes out next year, we got to, we got to rinse and repeat and do it stuff all over again next year. But um, it was, so before I get started, Charles, what is your feeling on what 2021 was uh, cinematically? And remember, we're still kind of in, in well, not kind of, we're in a pandemic, but we, we, it abated for a little bit to get us back out in theaters for a minute. And now it looks like we may be going back, at least in the short term or the first quarter, that it looks like we're going to have to hunker down again and start getting a lot of screening links uh, with, with this whole Omicron situation that's going on. So give me your feedback, man, on, on the year that was in film. Well, to me, I think it was a, uh pretty big hodgepodge of films and and at the beginning of a year as usual is kind of light but every it's the intensity of good films really picked up as the year went through a lot of things have been saved up from the year previously and just couldn't be held on to 
any longer. So that's why we got no time to die and the Black Widow and some other things. That, it, and it was interesting that even though we weren't in the theaters to see a lot of things, there were still a lot of good things coming out through whatever streaming services possible. So um, it, it, it's an, it was an interesting year for film. And like I said, very diverse in the, the offerings that you could see and where you could see them. So um, it, we got back to theaters at the end of the year for good or for bad, um, because <laughs> as we'll, we'll discuss a little later on, um, maybe it's a bad thing that we got back into theaters so soon. So we'll see, we'll see. Well, I mean, so I just want to lay one piece of groundwork because as I was doing the research, you remember this year is kind of a different year because it's kind of, it's not the, the normal 12 month calendar. Because remember, uh, we had, I want to say film year didn't close until the end of February this year. Am I accurate with that? Because the Academy That's Awards correct. last year were in April, I want to say it was. That's correct. So it's very interesting because you look back and there are films like, uh, what was it, Denzel Washington, The, the Little Things and Malcolm and Marie and, of course, uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. And there was one more uh, film that came out during that time period. But there were some, those films don't count toward this year. Those films count toward last year. So right. when you start looking at the film calendar, the film calendar is really like March or April through this year, so like eight to nine months, it's very strange. So considering that, let us go through, and I'm gonna go through uh, my honorable mentions first, cause I just wanted to have five, my five favorite films. So here's a list, and I have a long list of honorable mentions, man, cause these are films that did not make my top five. And I will start off with a film that I think was released in either the late first quarter or early second quarter on HBO Max. Because the other thing that we had that was really different this year is that Warner Brothers decided a year ago that since we were in a pandemic, that they would they cut a deal with HBO, which when I say cut a deal, Warner Brothers owns, they're all owned by the same company. So basically what happened is they decided that they would put the movies in, quote unquote, in theaters and on HBO Max on the same day, which ensured that A, the actors and directors and filmmakers weren't happy because they made their films a play on the big screen. B, it really uh, put a dent into the revenue that those films made. And for the most part, Warner Brothers, I'm sure their bottom line, uh, unless they signed up a lot of people on HBO Max. I don't know how these guys made money with these movies and they had to pay out bonuses for some of these people because you know, a lot of these actors weren't happy. We heard Denzel Washington, of course, later on over at Marvel, you heard Scarlett Johansson with Black Widow. So I'm saying all that to say that this is a recurring theme that we're gonna be talking about over the next hour about the year that was 2021. So Zack Snyder's Justice League was the first movie that I had on my honorable mention, Charles. And I thought that this movie um, for me was, Zack Snyder is, is kind of what I call the prototypical 50-50 filmmaker. Like half the movies he makes, I might dig. <clears throat> um, and then he makes another half of movies that I'm like, dude, uh, Sucker Punch, you know, nah, that wasn't good. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't want to elaborate any more than that. So let me just read through this honorable mention list. Uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League, Zola, Nine Days with Winston Duke, Nicolas Cage and Pig, uh, the documentary, My Name is Pauly Murray, which snuck up on me. I didn't know anything about it, but I'd heard people talking about it. And when I finally saw it, I was like, wow, it's pretty good. Coda which was a film that was released yeah. in the second quarter. Uh, really good movie. Ailey, the documentary, I thought was really, really good. Rita Moreno, just a girl who decided to go for it. Another strong documentary about this Latin, 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 Latin X icon. Uh, Mass with Ann Dowd and several other actors in this that I thought was film that came out a couple of months ago is really good. Uh, now, here we go. This, here's where the, uh, the, the rubber meets the road, Charles. The Power of the Dog, Licorice Pizza, 
West Side Story, Swan Song with Mahershala Ali. And believe it or not, my last honorable mention uh, to the woman who is the best Karen in the business, which means a, a, a white woman who, the Karen, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I care a lot. Rosamund Pike. <laughs> Man, I saw that movie uh, early this year. I was like, wow. That was that was really good. So that's my honorable mentions. Charles, do you have some honorable mentions or questions on the honorable mentions that I have? Well, first thing I'm going to say is I think I care a lot was in last year's uh, set of movies uh, because I believe Rosamund Pike was in uh, awards consideration a lot of places for that. Oh, film, that's right. So. Yeah, see, yeah, it's OK. So so I violated my own rule because that was that little <laughs> funky space that I was explaining about movies that came out. Yeah, okay, my bad. So take I Care a lot out, but I, to show you how much I like that movie, I, I thought about it. <laughs> Woo -hoo. Wow. That movie. If that you movie haven't seen incredible. that movie, that's a good one. You need to check that out. So that's my honorable mentions, man. And there was a lot of variety in there. And you'll notice that there are a lot of larger titles in there as well, because I went in a different direction this year with my top five. I'm surprised, though, to see that The Power of the Dog only uh, didn't make it into your top five, the way you praised this movie the, the, after we after we experienced it together. Uh, I thought that it certainly would have been in your top five, but I, I'm, I'm not I'm surprised. Yeah, However, it's, I'm, it's I am happy uh, to hear to I'm happy to hear that Coda made it into your honorable mentions because it's one of the films that it came out in the er, early summer. And I think a lot of people forgot have forgotten about that movie since then, how powerful that movie was, how uh, incredible the cast was in that film. So uh, thank, kudos to you for p selecting that film as well. So I didn't, um, I have one film that you didn't mention that's going to be in my honorable mentions because uh, it would have been top five. But there's so much good stuff. Summer of Soul for me was a really great film, wow. but it didn't make the top five for me. So I, I had to put that in my honorable mentions category. And also another great documentary I got to interview the director for, which is Attica, which came out on, uh, on Showtime Networks, which is a great look back at the, at the uh, prison riot that occurred uh, Wow. 71. 71. Yeah, it's been 50 years. So yeah. Yeah, incredible documentary. So yeah. I didn't do an honorable mentions list like you said, like like you did, because I it would just have been too long for me. And you you yourself listed about 10 films, wasn't it? <laughs> that came up honorable mentions. Uh, usually you you're saying that I'm the one that's cheating by <laughs> by not doing the homework, but I, I stuck to it this time. I'm I, I said I'm gonna be laser focused and do five my top five for the year. So well, you know it's interesting. You talked about that. Uh, how many how many did I have on my honorable mentions list? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, so pretty much, <laughs> I, I just wanted to make sure that there were certain films that I said those films. So Zola is a movie which um, I remember seeing it at a screening and, and remarked at the time, like, y'all got me out the house to watch this movie. But the, but the more time passed, Taylor Page's performance in the lead and then this really quirky story based on a set of tweets back in 2015, I thought was a story that more that needed to have a larger audience. Uh, nine days, you know, Shereen, Shereen Nicole, who's on our team and one of our colleagues, uh, talks about how much she loves this film with Winston Duke and Zazie Beetz. A uh, story about a man who, I don't know what his correct title is, but he literally uh, sits in a home and watches nothing but videos as <clears throat> there's an opening for a new soul to be born. And they're like, all these people who uh, come in the interview have nine days to, to talk about this or to, to, to kind of buy to be a soul. So I just thought that that was great. And just on cue, look who's coming in right now. All right. Other than blackfilmandtv.com's 
uh, founder, um, one of the, one of the best working daily critics uh, in our business, and a, a man who happens to have been my friend for the course of the last two decades. It is none other than young Wilson Wilson Morales, who's the youngest person here. How are you, Wilson? Good, you know, you got me out. I'm in the Caribbeans right now, you know, um, lying. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm a far, far away. What time is it? I think it's, uh, wow, it's, it's 10, 10 p.m. right where, you know, where we're at. <laughs> Whatever, man. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, so, right. So, Wilson, uh, you just in time because I went through my honorable mentions this year. Uh, Charles didn't. Charles didn't have a, a, but a couple honorable mentions before we get into the top five films that each of us are bringing to the table on today's show. Did you have any honorable mentions or, or films outside of your top five or ten this year? Uh, honorable mentions, and I think I guess when you think about your list and you're doing your top ten. Um, you know, you think about like what's outside of your top five, you know, mm -hmm. uh, what would they say is an honorable mention film? You know, uh, probably I have to come back to you on that for the sake of time. So. All right, well, let's go. All right. So well, I'll well, play while, he, while he thinks about it, I, I do want to mention uh, a couple films that didn't make the top five, but I think also should have honorable mentions for me. One is uh, Come On, Come On, which mm -hmm. uh, was with uh, Joaquin Phoenix and uh, Woody Norman, which is a great little film that, that I, I experienced at Middleburg. And uh, I don't think that a lot of people are giving a lot of uh, uh, credit for what it did, for what it was. And uh, The Unforgivable, which came out on, um, was that HBO? Was that Netflix. HBO or Amazon? Netflix. 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 Yeah. Uh, which is a Sandra Bullock movie where she was uh, plays a, a return a prisoner returning to society and searching for her sister. Uh, incredible movie with with small supporting roles from uh, um, Viola Morgan. Davis, Viola Davis, Davis Rob Morgan. and Rob Morgan. Rob Mor Rob Morgan seems to be appearing a lot lately. Uh, uh, I'm sure I'll be talking about him again. And finally. And finally, for my honorable mentions, and Tim is probably going to love this one, I'm putting Red Rocket on my list as an uh, honorable mention for well, one, of the, one, of, one of the most in interesting films of the year. Well, Red Rocket is, is going to be discussed, just not on this show. <laughs> so if you keep watching, it won't be on this show, but I will talk about Red Rocket. So without any further ado, because Wilson is always uh, I no, no, I, 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 got, I may have a few honorable mentions. Okay, uh, well, I go, ahead. Would say, some... go ahead. I, I would definitely say uh, in the Heights. You know, as much as people talked about with the you know color casting and all that, you know, if you watch the film as is, it's a solid film. You know, it's based on a Broadway musical. Uh, and it plays well, you know, they adapted it for the screen. They changed a few things, you know, but um, Anthony Ramos definitely showcased that he can be a lead guy down the road, as we will see down the road, because he's currently filming the new Transformer movies. Um, and, and that was a good story. Spider-Man, you know, obviously No Way Home, definitely an honorable mention, you know. Um, you, you wanted a film that lived up to ex its expectations and it did, you know, and you got, and then some, you know, this is what you call true cinema when you want to see a movie and it delivers, you know, some of these, you have some other movies that like, you know, you go in there and it don't live up to what you expected. Um, I would say, uh, and, and then also um, Coda, Coda's honorable mention only because there's a story that, you, you know, you don't you go in there, you don't know what it's about. It's a story about, you know, a, um, a deaf family, you know, for those who don't know, CODA stands for Children of, of uh, deaf, deaf, adult. deaf Adults. Deaf Adults, you know. Um, and, you know, it's a touching story. It reminded me of, um, what was the Robert Redford movie that won Best Picture? Ordinary People. Ordinary People, yeah. you know, in which, you know, you have the simplest of lives of a family just trying to make it through 
given their circumstances. And Emily, Amelia uh, um, Williams, I think I would say, you know, she did a good job as the lead. And Marley Matlin, who was a producer, and you know, have to point out was still the uh, was the last person to uh, make her film debut in the Best Actress category and win. You know, so and she's a producer as well as co-starring in the movie. All right. And, and ladies and gentlemen, that's why we have Wilson Morales come on the show, because Wilson Morales, even Cole, can just plop down, boom, <laughs> give him a couple of minutes to warm up. He's like a toaster. And then once he warms up, pow, you know, we got some good food coming out. So with that being said, let me now go to my list of my top five. And I'm just going to kind of introduce these. So I and then I have one. So I actually cheated again, Charles, because I have oh. a guy a tie in one of my, my top five. Oh. So, uh, so let me start off, uh, and this is in no particular order. Uh, I have a tie in here between Spider-Man, No Way Home, and Belfast. Now, the only reason why I technically have a tie is because it gives me an opportunity to talk about six films instead of the no, five this, that I really want to talk about. This is your, this is your, this this is is your honorable mention? No, 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 bro. This is my, I already went through my honorable mention. These are my top five films of the year. Let me finish. First of all, sir, you have a turn. Let me just do my, my explanation. As Wilson Morales just said about Spider-Man No Way Home, this is a film that, of course, comes with a built-in audience because it's a part of the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It is the 27th film in this universe. And to Wilson's point, which I would wholly agree with, there are films sometimes that are hyped and then they fail to deliver. Look no further than Matrix Resurrection for that, right? Or <laughs> other films that we can name. And, and yes, I'm taking a shot because people kept asking me, well, how come nobody's talking about the Matrix, Re Matrix movie? Like they're talking about Spider-Man. And I said, you'll see. <laughs> and you see. So Spider-Man it had all the had all the trappings after a year of Black Widow, Shang Chi, and the Eternals that it could have gone totally in an opposite direction. But not only does it deliver, and it's a crowd pleaser, it's a well made film that I guess if you went on Rotten Tomatoes, even though I'm not a Rotten Tomatoes dude by choice, and I and that's very specific to know because it's not like I can't be a Rotten Tomatoes critic. I just I'll let Wilson and, and, and all you guys do that. But I'm sure if I went to Rotten Tomatoes, it's still at about 90%, I would think, 90%-ish. People love this movie. Critics loved it. Audiences loved it. Hence, it made a, bi a billion dollars in about 10 days in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, people are putting their lives on the line, Wilson Morales, to go see Spider-Man No Way Home in the theaters it is one of the best five movies of the year in my estimation for that. So I, I put one movie in that I thought was a pure crowd pleaser in a movie that would not be technically, uh, a, 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 you know, like an Oscar or an awards contender, right? So that's Spider Man No Way Out, No Way Home. You mean you're putting it? In, you mean you're putting it in as your top six movies of the year? Top five. Stop it. Tied with this movie is Kenneth Bronner's film. Belfast, which I don't have to explain this amazing story that takes place uh, during the kind of origin of the Troubles over in Northern Ireland, um, filled, chock filled with amazing performances. Um, is it Syrian Highs? I, I keep messing that name up. Uh, who plays the grandfather? He's great in it. Jamie Dornan. Um, I can't pronounce the woman's name. Is it Kate? Kate? It's, it's Katrina. It's Katrina Bow. Katrina, yeah, Katrina Bow, uh, and little and little is it Jude Hill who plays yes. Buddy? Um, amazing cast, well told story, liked it a lot. Kenneth Bronner, I think, is going to squarely be in the race with this film. So those two were tied uh, in one spot. Coming in at number two, the harder they fall. I don't even have to say anything. It's almost the exact same explanation that I had with Spider Man. Here's a film from James Samuels. Uh, about based on real black people who lived in the eight or in the 19th century, 
not necessarily all of them who knew each other around the same time in this fictional tale, but it's a well-made story, amazing soundtrack. It's a movie that's important for the culture. I loved everything about The Harder They Fall. It had to make my top five list. Uh, a movie and coming at number three that Charles put in his honorable mention, and I think is, is easily the best documentary of 2021, this summer of soul, the story of the concerts that took place in Harlem in 1969, right around the same time as Woodstock. This movie has everybody from Stevie Wonder, Sly and the Family Stone, Nina Simone. I mean, like, how can you not put this movie at least for to me, how could you, how could this movie not be included in everybody's top five? It made mine, and there it is. And then the last two, King Richard is what it is. Uh, the story, Will Smith, uh, given probably a signature performance along with Anjanae Ellis, Demi Singleton, Sanaa Sidney, and a bunch of other folks. The story of Venus and Serena Williams' rise through their father, Richard Williams. And last but not least, I had to give much love to my girl, Rebecca Hall, along with her cast, which is Tessa Thompson, um, Ruth Naga, and Andre Holland and Passy. So yes, it is not an accident. My list heavily tilt to all of what I thought was some of the stronger black films and documentaries of 2021. And then I leave it to wonderful people like you, Charles Kirkland, to give me your top five list. We're right okay. back in a quick Okay, I'm really going to do a top <laughs> five because, you know, some people want to cheat and do six movies. That, that's, right. that's fine. Exactly. That's fine. We'll let you do that because you're the host. Congratulations. <laughs> I, I did the homework. Time, Stop playing. I didn't do six. I, I did the homework this time, and I actually did five movies. So for me, Spider-Man, yes. No Way Home, the, one of the best Marvel movies ever made, even though it's Sony. Uh, all the... the uh, cameos all the storyline everything was perfect about this film it delivered from beginning to end I, I i mean we never even got a chance to talk about how great this movie was uh, on on our show but just the way they wrap up everything for for these this spider-man and the other spider-men it is incredible i think a, a wonderful job that was done uh, yes, it's still 90% or more on Rotten Tomatoes because... Spoilers, no spoilers. No it, spoilers. It, is a, it is a... What uh, do you mean, no uh, spoilers, man? This movie done made a billion dollars. Yeah, if you ain't seen it by now, this man. Movie is, on, this movie has been the top movie for three weeks now. <laughs> if, no if, if anybody who's watching this hasn't seen it, then they... I don't know what rock they're living under. If We got people who are getting COVID going to see this movie because... <laughs> It's, I Pretty mean, much. every theater has been packed to go see Spider-Man No Way Home. And yes, it made my top 10. Um, I said Belfast. Yeah, Belfast, just like Tim talked about. Belfast is an excellent film about the life of uh, 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 director Rick Kenneth Branagh, how he grew up in Ireland, has a wonderful soundtrack uh, powered by Van Morrison. Uh, and and I'm sitting there rocking to every song and enthralled by a black and white uh, movie that is just makes you focus on all the things that are important. Uh, yes, King Richard, like you said, King Richard, that's Will Smith being doing his thing. Hopefully this year he gets the recognition that he deserves, uh, even though there's been a, a, a great push for Denzel Washington, who did not make my top five or even the honorable mentions for the tragedy of Macbeth. Uh, the harder they fall, yeah. Uh, again, James James Samuels does, does his thing with an incredible cast. I mean, you got Idris Elba, you got Regina Hall, Zazie Beetz, the the hottest new uh, actor on the on the block, Jonathan Majors, all, all and and on and on and on in this film. It's incredible. But rounding out my number five spot that kicked Summer of Soul to the to the wayside for me was Cyrano. Cyrano with Peter Dinklage as the as in a new reworking of of uh, the tale of Cyrano de Bergerac. Um, incredible story, incredible way they the, the I mean tears coming out as this thing is playing with Kelvin Harrison and and it's just an incredible film. 
and and just unexpected. You, I mean, we've all seen this this whole tale of Cyrano played out several times. Even Steve Martin's done a, a take on it. But the way they did this with the music and the and the cinematography and the costumes and I mean, instead of him having a big nose, he's a, a little person, and it's just incredible. I give Cyrano the number five spot at least on my top five, and that's why Summer of Soul didn't is is an honorable mention. All right, so before we go throw it to Wilson, I just wanted to just clarify that with three hundred and forty three reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, Spider Man No Way Home is at ninety four percent. Uh, with over 25,000 audience reviews, it's at 98%. So when I make the case for Spider-Man being one of the best films of the year, Spider-Man does something that a lot of films don't do, right? There are not a lot of films that connect with audiences and get critical acclaim. Spider-Man, No Way Home. It's funny because I wanted to find out who were these people who threw a rotten tomato on, there was a couple of people <laughs> Who, who the, the, your, 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 your comments just are nonsensical. So you just need to go and find another film. You need to have somebody else on your team review Spider-Man No Way Home because that's close to a slam dunk of a, of a comic book film as you ever are gonna get. So with all that being said, Wilson Morales, what are the top five movies of the year for you? And I am really anxious to hear this because you went and got some food. You had a chance to stare in the phone have a chance to go back and forth because I know how you do. Because, you know, we all do this when we do interviews. They'd be like, bring me your five films. You sit there, you go, man, let me really think about it. Let me, get, let me get that one out. Let me bring this one in. So, Wilson, with all that being said, let's hear what you got. I was hearing you, but then I said, okay, I'm hearing my stomach as well. <laughs> like, let's get some food in here before you start hearing that. All right. Number five, I have Doom. You know, here's a movie that as we all know, the, the most famous one before this year was the one from David Lynch, which was never critically acclaimed, you know, and it was like, he tried to, you know, he threw everything in the kitchen and they tried, you know, and it's a, it's a very dense book. You know, it's a very, very dense book. Yes, we all have, <laughs> we all have the DVD, you know, I have the, the backpack as well, you know, pull out that, <laughs> you know, so then, uh, here's a story, obviously, uh, that's half the, here's a movie that's half the story, you know, in which, obviously, um, Timothy Chalamet is the lead, and you've got Rebecca Ferguson, and you've got uh, Zendaya, but all of the things work in this movie, the director, Denny Villanueva, did a good job, he's one of the few directors that wants to create film, that wants to make you to go to the theaters, He's, you know, a lot of these movies you can actually say to yourself, oh, I can watch this at home, I can watch this, you know. But he, what he creates, you want to see on a big screen. You know, everything from the cinematography to the production design to the score by Hans Zimmer, all cylinders are working, you know. And if it were a complete film, he'd be in the running for best, I, I could think, I still think he'll be in a running for best picture, maybe best director. Uh, but here's a film that works that, you know, and you can't wait to see what happens with the follow-up to conclusion as we did. Hopefully it's as good as P what Peter Jackson did with Lord of the Rings, knowing that he, instead of doing, doing one film, he broke it up into three films and look how great they were. Um, I think that's a great, I'm sorry, Wilson. I think that's a great point where you say uh, three films instead of one. Uh, because if he had tried to do it all in one film, I think it would have been a worse film. You're right. I think he did a great job in breaking it down. Yeah, I, I would definitely have uh, Summer of Souls, the number four film. You know, as you guys have mentioned, you know, depending on how old you are, there's a lot of people in this uh, documentary that you heard about and you, you've heard their music. But to see them in their prime, that's something you can't see. You know, to see them in their prime, you can see their videos, you know, when they're doing a video for their songs, but to see them perform, you know, and if you ever got the chance to see this at a theater, like I did, you know, as, as opposed to watching that at home, you see it, you know, it's good to see this movie on a big screen, because when you see Nina Simone, Sly and the Family Stone, you know, 
uh, there are certain acts that you've heard of before, you, and some of them are known for their songs, but to see them live, you know, that's a good feeling. And to know that, like, no one else had attempted to try to put this together, you know, and it took Quest Love, like, okay, let me put all of it together. Let's, and I'm sure I'd like to know what did not make the cut, you know, because this is not like all one concert. This was a series of concerts they put together as one film. Right. Um, then I have uh, Cyrano. You know, I, I enjoyed Cyrano a lot. Obviously, you know, anybody who's a, who's a really, a really a, a film of Fraccionale would remember the 1950 film in which Jose Farrell won the Oscar for Best Actor. Yeah. You know, so you, so you know what kind of, uh, what you have to do. And, you know, for those, you know, and you also remember the Steve Martin, you know, it's like, it's kind of funny. Steve Martin has done a lot of films, but this is one of his top five films, I think, you know. Uh, who played it well, but Peter Dinkley, what they did here, uh, instead of using the whole noise, uh, the nose factor, they did something different. And it's Peter Dinklage, it's Kelvin Harrison, it's Haley Banner, and it's Joe Wright. And, you know, you're not only getting a story, but the production design works, the music by the national works. You know, Joe Wright has done well with some of the films he's done. You know, you think about um, Pride and Prejudice, you know, and uh, I think with some of a majority of the movies that he's directed have gotten acclaim and have gotten acclaim for some of his actors. And hopefully Peter Dinklage could be one of them this year. Um, so wait a minute, before you move on, Wilson, don't, you know, you talked about the soundtrack from the nationals. When I, we saw this movie at Middleburg, when they got to that scene where they said, take this letter to my wife, I think the call, fall, call was called, whenever it falls, whew, that was like an emotional punch in the gut. That is a really, really strong story. And I'm glad that I forgot to put it on my list. And I'm glad you guys are talking about it because I absolutely agree. I love Sarah Nuff. Mm -hmm. But go ahead, Wilson. Number two, I would say the harder they fall. You know, obviously, you know, at the, you know, when you think about it, there aren't that many black films we look forward to. You know, there aren't that many black films, period, that we get that's going to be on a grand scale. You know, there are films out there, don't get me wrong, you know, small, big, but then there are films with, you know, to see a film with a big name, it's rare. You know, Denzel and Will can't do films every year, you know, so he was, who's going to be the next one to step up? And James Samuel, for the most part, no one really knows who he, who he is or was. You know, he had done a previous film, he had done a, <laughs> film, uh, a short film, he had done a short film a while back, no, actually maybe eight years ago, using the same characters, the same black cowboys. Mm -hmm. And that was a short film. And as we know, not many people see short films. To know, so when you put together a film co-produced by Jay-Z and James Lasseter, starring, you know, Idris Elba, uh, Regina King, you know, Jonathan Majors, Lakeith Stanfield, Dion Cole, Jay-Z Beats, a lot of the quote unquote hot players who are in right now and you're giving them these roles that hopefully people will go back and Google, you know, um, it, it's a big thing, you know, like, and it's a fictional story. So like for anybody who says this, it's not a true story. It's not a true account. None of these things happen to those characters that they're playing, but to, it's like saying, oh, let me put it together a story about sports, but using Michael Jordan back, you know, it's like putting the dream team together Right. And putting a story about it, you know, and making it very fictional. You know, so I think there's a lot of reasons to watch this movie besides the story is, you know, you're getting history here and you're getting a little bit of a lesson that you can go back and hopefully you can continue to do that to give these people some some uh, some credit. So people, do you know who Nat Love is, you know, or, you know, or Rufus or Buck, you know, and all of that stuff. Um, and then my number one film is King Richard. Wait, wait, I'd wait! Before you, do, before you do, before you do, before you do number one film, I just want you to take that call from James Samuel, who said, "Wait a minute, who? I do mean, you don't know who I am." <laughs> like, I'm number two. And this, I'm number two. And then the second, and then the second thing is, uh, oh, watch me live. It was compare, like, did you just compare the harder they fall to Space Jam? <laughs> No, I never, I never mentioned space. No, time. no, he was, he was saying that you take the dream. He was saying if you coach. put Michael Jordan and some no, other no, no, NBA yeah. characters, that's Space Jam. That's Space Jam. No, 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 no. <laughs> wow. You know, All right. you know. But no, anyway, no, number one. My I number one, this. my number one is is King Richard. You know, I saw this movie months ago, 
And I was, I, I, maybe I can say I was one of the first, earliest ones to see it. And when I saw it, I knew right away, Will Smith, I think, has finally done it. I think he's finally done the film that's going to hopefully get him that Oscar. Um, I think there was a lot of uh, drawbacks when he was first cast. You know, he doesn't look like Richard Williams. Are we going to get the same old, same old Will Smith? And I think he embodied himself in the role of Richard Williams. People like to say, oh, it's the story of Venus and Serena. No, it's the story of Richard, how he got, how Venus and Serena became who they are, you know? And he immersed himself in this role. And it's just not only him, it's Angie Nuellis, it's Demi Singleton, it's Anaya Sidney, it's John Bertow, all through the direction of Ronaldo Marcus Green. You know, Will Smith is the catalyst you know, that brings it all together, but it's a complimentary thing when the whole cast puts that thing together. And it's not easy creating a good sports story because not only are you getting it, but you're seeing the tennis matches, you, you know, and either you're new tennis, either you know tennis and you already know the, what's going to happen, or you didn't know tennis and you're, you're finding intense <laughs> as you watch what happens and you see now, I'm sure this, there'll be some naysayers that talk about how tough Richard Williams was, and but this is not about so much his personal life, which in a way it is, but it's how he got these girls to be, who they are, you know, and Will Smith, you know, definitely defined him, you know, we've seen him in Ali, we've seen him in The Pursuit of Happiness, which both got him a nomination, but not the win, but I think this is the one, you know, and I think King Richard stands out when you watch it as a, as a family, in terms of like, there's movies you may like as an individual, and then there's films you can like as a whole, and I think this is it. Well, it's interesting because Wilson had uh, Heart of They Fall, King Richard, and I'm trying to think. Um, you didn't you 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 didn't put in. Or did you have No Way Home too? Or you had No Way Home as a uh, as uh, a. Right. Okay, right so around. we had so we had two. And how many how many did you have of mine? Did you have on your list, Charles? I had four of the same, except for the one difference was Aaron. Oh. Oh, very interesting. All right. I mean, so we're sort of kind, all of us are in the same ballpark. And to 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 piggyback off Wilson, um, Wilson is absolutely correct, because I remember when he saw King Richard, he texted me immediately and was like, yo, it's good. I was like, for real? He's like, it's good. So I was like, OK. So and, and I remembered that when I went and saw it later on. It was funny. I saw it at, at a film festival in Middleburg. Uh, the first time and it played pretty well. It wasn't until I saw it out in LA at uh, on the lot when it really played well in front of the audience. I was like, yeah, Will's got some here. This is pretty special. But to your point and what we've been talking about behind the scenes is Denzel Washington, the surgeon and Wilson, it would be so funny if this was the year that Denzel came back as an underdog <laughs> and took Will out again. I'm like, I don't know what you do if you Will Smith. You just gotta, you gotta wait and find out. Denzel, you ain't got nothing coming out this year, right? I can put a movie out now. <laughs> well, you, you, you know, you say underdog. You got to remember, 20 years ago when they competed against each other. When you think about Training Day and a Pursuit of Happiness. No, was it Ali or Training Day? It was Ali. It was Ali. Ali. Uh, yes, sir. both of them were underdog because Russell Crowe at the time was the favorite. Yeah. Well, that is true. Pro was expected to win since the since the beautiful mind ended up sweeping all the other categories: picture, director, screenplay, um, best supporting actress. Russell Crowe was expected to win, but then he, you know, he had some personal drama that happened that got him out of the race. And the next man up was Denzel because he had not won a best actor at that time. You know, and it was and he even though and it, and it was sort of like a makeup. Because was he wasn't he denied for for Hurricane? No, no, no. He he didn't he didn't win for Hurricane. Was he nominated Russell, for Hurricane? No, because Russell Crowe won for Hurricane. I mean, Russell no, no. Crowe won for Gladiator. The year he was, was he nominated for Hurricane. for Hurricane. Was he nominated? He, for he Hurricane? was nominated for Hurricane. Okay. He was nominated. Um, but the one he got screwed out of was Malcolm X, which is the one he should have won Best Actor for eight years well, yeah. earlier. Well, you know, uh, he's, he's now. 
when you start thinking Malcolm X, you start Hurricane, and all of a sudden it was like, come on, what are we waiting for? You know? Well, I mean, but Denzel already had Oscar. He had won a supporting Oscar for Yeah, but this is a lead. There's a whole yeah, different beast. Yeah, but that's a, a whole yeah, different, whole different beast. category to go from supporting it's to a whole different that. beast, man. So you're you're absolutely right. But I think it's funny because it was about a week and a half ago, I started reading in the trades, and people were like, man, Denzel Washington. And I'm going, nobody was talking about this movie. It debuted in New York. Um, I didn't hear a lot coming out of New York. Um, I remember running into Clayton Davis at Variety when we went Middleburg, and I asked him about it, and he was like, eh, it's okay. So I'm like, okay, I'll check it out. I saw it. I was like, it's okay. I mean, Denzel Washington, he's solid in almost nearly everything he does. So it's kind of hard for me to be really objective on when Denzel really does good work. Wilson, I mean, you understand what I'm saying? His work is always good. So, like, how do you quantify this is better than Fences, which is better than Flight, which is better? Come on, man. You know, here's the thing. Very recently, his birthday just happened. And every time his birthday comes up, because it's around it's between, it's around towards the end of the year, people always put up a collage of his movies, and they, we go, which five, which three, which ten will you pick out? And you can say all ten. I can, if you told me we're doing a Denzel Washington day, and we're putting out 10 movies back to back to back. You're going to be like, I ain't leaving the house. You got Crimson Tide. <laughs> you got Safe House. You know, you got you, this, dude, this like, dude has four bad movies that I can count. Four. You know, movies. it's like, it's like you might as well say Denzel Washington Channel and rank it up there with some karate flicks. Like, what you watching? I'm watching, you know, like uh, 10 Tigers of Quantum. What you watching? I'm watching Crimson Tide. Mm. Inside, inside man, uh, yeah. you know, like, like what, what Denzel, if you're not watching, watching Ricochet, Virtuosity, uh, Two Guns, which was not or, a favorite. Or, 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 hey, 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 hey. Or, 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 or the little things, or the little things. Or the little things. Five bad Denzel. <laughs> two, falling, falling. Falling. two Guns is not a bad movie. Two Guns is a great movie. I, I would say it's two it's, guns. I, I like the chemistry. Wait, hold on a second. Well, don't say none. You said two guns is a great Denzel Washington movie. Are I didn't say it was me? great. I didn't I said it's not a bad this is where Denzel we have to movie. Do one of those you mystery said science three thousands and pull Charles's black card. <laughs> bruh, bruh, that movie, like Wilson said, Fallen, Ricochet, Virtuosity. Maybe he got six, but but that's not bad considering out of 30 40 plus. years, bruh. 40 years. Of, of movies from Denzel Washington, like Carbon Copy, I don't I don't count as a Denzel Washington. Yeah, that was that was that was pre. That's, that's George Siegel. Well, Denzel's just <laughs> in it, but but Denzel <laughs> is is like his first movie. He's debuting. Power is a movie that people ne- that a lot of people didn't see with him and Richard Gere in 1986. I've seen all of Denzel Washington's movies. Yeah, I Car- even Carbon enjoyed- Copy is when he was like, "This the yeah. one time I'll do comedy, no more." Right. Like, oh yeah. Oh, Heart Condition. Remember that? That was, that's Bob Hoskins. Wow. That's, that's yeah, with Bob Hoskins. Like, yeah, you know, as like, yeah, he could he could have been the next. Let me not say his name. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just telling you, Denzel Washington's career is exemplary, which which leads us back to our, my original point that I was giving to both of you guys that when you watch the tra- him in the tragedy of Macbeth as Macbeth, um, I still think Will Smith is in a really strong position, but. If he lost to Denzel Washington, people have come from behind on Denzel. Casey Affleck is the best example because I swore Denzel was going to win his third Oscar for Fences. And people gave me this dumb argument about, well, you know, it plays like a stage play. Man, you know how many Shakespearean plays that have won Oscars? And those are stage plays that are movies. It's the same thing. So there's this double standard when it comes to Black people who are up for this major award because – it's not just the award, it's also political. You know, that little small club of like seven people that have won three Oscars. And no disrespect to Frances McDormand, but I swear she should not have won last year for Nomad Land. I, I that Viola Davis should have won that Oscar last year if it were me. But I told you when Tragedy of Macbeth was coming out, I said, This is the the sleeper pick. It was just like Denzel said, hold my beer. Look, Will's going to win? Hold my beer. I got something for you. But the thing is, a lot of people think that he was snubbed for fences, and that's the reason why he won training day. It may be another case where 
he got snubbed for fences, and this is going to be the recognition he gets with Tragedy of Macbeth. He, he, it's he, not he's his a best at. work. It's not his best work, and I don't think it's better than Will Smith's work, but it's just the po- politics of Oscar sometimes. And so it's like Tom Brady. Yo, don't sleep on me. <laughs> don't sleep on me. He could come back and be like, you know, what do I have to do to win? You know, it's like, and, and <laughs> here's the thing. This whole game about awards it's all about positioning. You know, it's always about positioning when you come out, how you come out and how you market it. You know, at the end of the day, you know, none of us are mentioning respect, you know, because it came out early in August. Had that's not been- why. That, I was going to say, that's not why. We- <laughs> that's not why. Coda, Coda came out before respect and Coda made everybody's list on some capacity. You know, so like it hadn't been in October. <laughs> That's not know, why. Say, say, it's like a you hey. know, Cynthia Revo, Revo got nominated for Harriet. And none of us had our, our Harriet on that list at that time, you know? And, and, and watch this and still didn't have her on that list. Um, I, I thought that that was a miscarriage of justice. But, but let's talk about Jennifer Hudson because we got about nine minutes. Um, you, everybody on this call, or on this show saw that film, right? And I think what hurt respect was the fact that Genius Aretha had come out like three or four months earlier. It was eight hours, eight episodes, eight one hour episodes, excuse me. Um, you had Cynthia Rebo, um, who I'm not gonna say was better than Jennifer Hudson or was worse than Jennifer Hudson, but I think the fact that they had eight hours to really break Aretha Franklin down and really kind of explain the story versus what uh, Liesl Tommy did with a two and a half hour film that only kind of kind of went through like 12 years of Aretha's life. Um, I just thought that the screenplay let that movie down. Jennifer Hudson, I thought was solid. She was really good. She embodied Aretha Franklin really, really well. The issue is, is that she was better than the film. It always, it almost reminds me when we talk about films like um, uh, what's the, uh, the the Kristen Stewart film Spencer, when you think because it, it's almost to me it's almost just like Spencer. Uh, Kristen Stewart is better than the film. The film really is not that good. She's okay. Jennifer Hudson's okay. So I can understand why that film didn't make the list. It hasn't made a lot of top ten lists, including Wilson Morales, who was like, "Yeah, man," because it came out early. That's not why. <laughs> that's not why that movie didn't get mentioned. Uh, any other any other movies that we're missing or any other performances from this year that uh, that anybody wants to spotlight in this best of show? Um, I talked about before you got on Wilson about Rita Moreno, uh, who her documentary just the girl who decided to go for it. There was some really strong docs, and and the fact that Summer of Soul made two of our top five lists. Just goes to show you that that movie was really, really well done. But there was some other stuff, and I brought up earlier Wilson. I don't. I'm not sure if you had a chance to see it. Um, my name is Paulie Murray. That one blew me away. That was a really, really good doc about somebody that has sort of a hidden figure, sort of an arc. That if they would have made that as a feature film, you'd be like, man, I didn't know that this woman mm-hmm. did this or this woman did that. It was a really, really well done documentary. There was also Attica, directed by Stanley Nelson. And I was talking about that one, yeah. In which, you know, over the years, you know, I've always heard about Attica, you know? It's almost like Attica is like Alcatraz, you know, like a couple of prisons you've always heard about, but you don't really know the story, you know? And so to see this documentary, to see like, and get an insight to like what happened from the outside, from the inside, you know, Stanley did a really good job in terms of, you know, and then I went to a New York, I won't say premiere of it, where those who are still alive, some of them showed up, you know, and to hear that story, you know, and obviously, thankfully, these guys, you know, they paid, made it do their crime and made did their time and now they're out. But to tell that story and they live to tell the story, you know, it, it's an incredible thing what Stanley put together. Um, you know, and I think there's another lady, Tracy, I don't want to, I forgot her name. Um, it was not just Stanley, it was, he had another, he had a co-director with him. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, I, you I, have, I, I, I can't I think of say, I interviewed Stanley Nelson about that. And he said, 
I asked him why why now did you want to make this? I know it's been 50 years. He's like, there's a generation of people who don't know. And plus the people who survive don't know how much longer they're going to be alive to tell the story. So he said he had to get in there and get those those it was about the people who survived he getting their story told and powerful Here, documentary. Powerful. Here's a movie and another movie I want to mention out there is Power the Dog. It's not everybody's favorite, but the thing I said about Power the Dog is that it's it's a, almost a throwback to a good film that maybe does well in time. I, I think about that Robert Redford movie um, with Meryl Streep, you know, that no one really talks about, but it won Best Picture. And they had some out of Africa that took out the color purple. Yeah, out of Africa that took out the <laughs> color purple. You know, see, like look at you. You know, it's like we're gonna know those movies. Like what beat color purple? What beat uh, uh, do the right thing? You know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> You know, it's like oh. you, you always know those, but you know, Jane Campion has been a, a well-known director who should have gotten the win when she did the piano, you know, and, and to some degree, some categories are old boy network, you know, and she could, she's definitely at the top of the running for best director, you know, and she hired a team that put together a well-crafted movie from the talent, from the, from the talent in front of the screen and behind the screen, you know, Benedict coming back, you know, obviously people know him from Dr. Strange, from Sherlock Holmes, you know, here he, he does well uh, playing, uh, I would say the quote unquote bad guy, you have to kind of read the story without giving it away. And, and Cody Smith McPhee, you know, young actor who stands out on this one, you know, and I think the, the races this year is not so much the, the best actor, best actress, it's the supporting categories because you have a lot of people in supporting roles and that just says, it's a good ensemble film. You think about West Side Story with Ariana Du Bois and Rita Marino. You think of, you know, even the guys, Mike Face, I think his name is, you know, those guys. You think of Belfast with Kieran Hines and Jamie Dorman and Katrina and Katrina and Judy Dench, you know, that team right there. You think of Andre Ellis and John Bertow. It's not just one person supporting the movie, it's a number of them, you know, even the power of the dog. You're gonna have a number of films that literally half the whole cast of Coda, you know, Marley Matler, uh, Troy Kotzer, the guy who plays the son, you know, uh, it's an all tribute to the writing team, you know, because they're not just, you know, putting it together for just one person. They're putting it together for a whole, you know, it's almost like a play. Like what part do I have? Oh, it's juicy. I'll do it. You know, like, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of talent, you know, somebody's got to play a lesser role in a right. movie. But, you know, the writing team to some of these movies did a good job in putting together, uh, especially when you think about King Richard, you know, Tania Sidney and Demi Singleton did a lot, you know, because not only did they have dialogue, but they also had to play tennis. And that's not easy. You have to learn that, you know, and you ain't have no stunt double, you know, when you're shooting them scenes, you know, so like, that's good. And hopefully, you know, it, get, it shows people. You know, for the people, you know, lots of times we always hear people, depending on your age, uh, you hear of them, but you never really saw them in their prime. You know, it's like people, or young folks are now hearing about Venus and Serena, but they didn't see them when they were coming up. You right, know, we right. have. You yeah. say, we have. So by, so by the time you're knowing about Serena Williams now, 23-time Grand, Grand Slam champion, it's like, oh, you take a look at her when she was coming up and how all of a sudden she was surpassing all these bigger names in front of her. You know? All right, sir. So in the one, stop, of, the, one um, of the big things, we, uh, one of the big things that I uh, want stop say we gotta go. <laughs> we are running out of time. Y'all are getting ready. We wrapping it up. We want to thank Wilson Morales because this is his last show of our year. We want to see Wilson in the new year. Hopefully, we will. Uh, I promise we will because it's going to be much slower for Wilson. So Wilson, <laughs> uh, we will have you back on. Charles, it is always a pleasure uh, for our audience. Thank you for taking this ride with us for 60 minutes. Uh, go back and listen to this. And, and we dropped a lot of recommendations in this show so you can check out some of the best of the year. Until next time, 484 is a wrap. Happy New Year's to everyone at home. Wilson and Charles, happy New Year to you. And we'll see you guys on the other side. You guys take care. All right. And as Tim will say, go to the movies. <laughs> there you go. See something good at the movies. <laughs> Peace. Yep. Was it theaters or on streaming? <laughs> <Can't be laughs> <going on. laughs>